Take one. The Chase, the eighth serial of Doctor Who's second season, first broadcast in six parts from the 22nd of May to the 26th of June, 1965. This would this story would be the introduction of Stephen Taylor, played by Peter Purves, but would also be the departure story for companions Ian Chesterton and Barbara Wright, as William Russell and Jacqueline Hill would depart the series following the story. Now. The first Doctor, played by William Hartnell, and his companions Ian Chesterton, William Russell, Barbara Wright, Jacqueline Hill, and Vicky Pallister, Maureen O'Brien, they've, in their previous adventure, The Space Museum, which I have done a review for, you can find it in the playlist, uh, they, in their previous adventure, they had managed to pick up a piece of tech called the Space Time Visualizer. And at the start of the story, they mainly use it just to see certain events from history without needing to go there. And they have a good time doing so, with them viewing events involving Abraham Lincoln, Shakespeare and Queen Elizabeth I, and a performance by the Beatles in 1965. However, shortly afterwards they find that the Daleks have recently begun pursuing them in their own time machine, and they essentially have to try and find a way to get away. They've got 15 minutes ahead of the Daleks, so they have to try and find some way of extending that as much as they can. And what follows is them being travelling to a variety of places in an attempt to escape from the Daleks once and for all. Planets, places they end up going include the desert planet of Iridius, where they end up teaming up with a group of creatures called the Iridians, of course. The recently built Empire State Building in 1930 or 1931, I have no idea. Uh, the Mardi Celeste, shortly before it was abandoned. A haunted house in the middle of a theme park. And finally, the jungle planet of Mechanus, where they ultimately have to make their last stand against the Daleks. Now, overall, what do I think of the story overall? Well, I only really have two small problems with it, and they really are minor things. First one, and I guess the lesser of the two, is that I think they're trying to sell. I think with this story, they tried to sell a little too hard that Vicky is a companion from the future. I when she calls up the Beatles concert in 1965, uh, at the end of it, Ian and Barbara asked her how she liked them. It's like, oh yeah, I like them very much. It's like I just I didn't know they played classical music. It's just like classical. And even then, when they visit, when they visit New York, she's like, "I've read about this ancient New York, like ancient." Just, <laughs> I mean, I think they tried to sell a little too hard that Vicky is from the far future or something. I I don't know. It just kind of felt like they were trying a little bit too hard with that. But the other thing that I'll admit is possibly a little bit more of a complained about the story is when they finally reach the planet of Mechanus and specifically when they get up into the city. Uh, while they spend most of their time down in the jungles of Mechanus, in part six they discover a city above in the treetops, which they ultimately find their way up to. And this city is patrolled regularly by spherical robots known as mechanoids and my problem is with the city itself, really. I mean, when they're in actual sets, it doesn't look too bad. It actually looks quite good, and it looks fairly futuristic. The only thing is, when they have to do far away shots of it, while, well, when there's nothing going on with it, it looks okay enough, if a little fake looking, but when they have to have... Uh, they show a shot of a mechanoid moving in the model city, it is rather embarrassingly fake. And yeah, just it's very apparent that it is a model. At least that's what I thought while watching it through. I mean, if you think it looks more realistic, f fair enough. It just, I for me, it just didn't work. But the stuff that does work, they do manage to do some quite funny stuff and do some, and they actually do manage to make some of the stuff very entertaining. I mean, it, when they first visit the Empire State Building, and they've got one guy who's like, "How are you doing all this?" and like, let me get a picture, and then until he turns away, and when he turns back, they've gone. I mean, that's pretty funny. I mean, when they visit the haunted house, and 
end up encountering robot versions of Frankenstein and Dracula and seeing the Daleks go up against them. That's really funny. I will admit, in at the end, the cliffhanger of part one, hearing a Dalek grunting when it's moving out of the sand, that to me was a little odd. It's like, we've seen these creatures do incredible things later down the line, and yet they're grunting coming out of the sand. And I was once again watching it with, with family members, and... Uh, they go, well, of course the Daleks had to advance later on. Like, well, they didn't actually gain the ability to fly until the late 80s. I mean, this is still early stuff for them. But, of course, the main thing to remember about this serial is it is the departure of William Russell and Jacqueline Hill as Ian and Barbara. Essentially, when we get to the end of Part 6, the Daleks have been defeated. They've been they've invaded the city of Mechanus, and they... And when the Doctor and his companions get back down to the ground, uh, they, the Doctor admits that the Daleks' time machine does appear to be very functional, and it, it does seem to be very good, to which Ian and Barbara ask him if he could instruct them on how to operate the time machine. Because after all their time with the Doctor, they've decided now they want to go home. As Ian says to him, I want to sit in a pub and drink a pint of beer. I want to visit a cricket match. To which, while the Doctor is rather against it at first, considering it's suicide, he eventually does relent and show them how to operate the Daleks' time machine, stating they must follow his orders precisely. This ultimately works, and it's enough to transport them back home, although it is two years after when they left. They left in 1963, and they're returning in 1965, to which we then see them having fun just around London and thanking the Doctor for their time. To which the Doctor, after being questioned by Vicky if he's alright, he said, I will miss them. And this is only the second companion exit story, the first of course being with Susan in the Dalek Invasion of Earth. The chase, as I said, it's got some good, it's got some, a lot of really good points. The only three things that, as I said, I really say against it are one, they're trying to push it a little bit too hard that Vicky is from the future, or at least from a point later than Barbara, than Ian and Chet, Ian and Barbara. Uh, two, the city of Mechanus does look a little fake, and three, the Dalek grunting was a little weird. Aside from that, this is a great story, and it really did make me feel. I did feel sad when Ian and Barbara left. I mean, I haven't seen that much classic First Doctor stories. I mean, this is only the ninth story of his that I've actually seen. But, you know what? I feel it was a good one. So, there you go. There's my quick little review of The Chase. So, I definitely say check it out if you get the chance. And it is a companion exit story that I think is on the better side of things. I mean, there, we definitely had far worse. I mean, Leela's exit in The Invasion of Time I thought was incredibly forced. And... While I did enjoy Dragonfire, Mel's reason for leaving I never entirely got. So we've had worse with Companion Exits. But there you go, that's my quick review of The Chase. Once again, I have no idea what my cl next classic story will be. Maybe I'll go more First Doctor, maybe I'll try and fill in some more of others. But there you go, The Chase. And until next time, see ya.